Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, the Lord hath broken thy works, and the ships were broken that they were not able to go to Tarshish. And I want to lift an expression out of this passage of Scripture this morning, and the ships were broken. But you know, sometimes folks' ships are sunk who have no unholy alliance. And I think it's a part of life and it's a part of the Bible to read that many times people in their lives step out upon the shores, as it were, and look up and down the line of the sea and they see all their ships broken to splinters and dashed upon the shore and their ships are sunk. I have been corresponding for a number of months, maybe a few brief years, with a church and a preacher going through one of the greatest trials of illness that a preacher could ever have. He was a young man and in the bloom of youth and doing a great work for the Lord. And his people loved him, and they still do. But awful disease and sickness came till he lost his kidneys and transplants and all of these. I received those letters over a period of some two or three years and responded accordingly. The other day I received a letter from the preacher, and the preacher said, I can no longer preach. He said, my health is gone, and I have only a short time to live, and I want to thank you for your prayers, and so forth. And I thought of that good man in the bloom of youth, had gone all out for God, and pastoring a church and preaching the Word of God. But one day, recently, he stepped about upon the shores of life, and saw the scattered debris of all of his fleet, and God had sunk his ships. You know, this happens sometimes. God knows how to use the stormy sea to sink the ships of people when they need to be sunk. And sometimes, I repeat, the ships of good people are sunk with earthquakes and storms. He learned something else. He learned of the power of God. He learned that man is no match for God, and neither are you. And I talked to some people uh, in my life about the Lord, and they feel God has no control over me. God has no right to my life, nevertheless, uh, my soul. But I want to tell you, friend, I don't have nerve enough to do that. To challenge and to dare God. Don't you ever shake your fist at God. God said to Joseph, I want to teach you, you are no match for the Almighty God. Neither you, neither am I. God knows how to sink your little navy and give you a glimpse of the broken debris of your ships of good intentions lying up and down the seashore of your life. Am I talking to somebody this morning whose ships are all broken? I say two things. First of all, here's a man that needed to have them broken. But a many a good person has had their ships all broken. Oh, when the doctor says your health is gone, and how our hearts have been saddened by the loss of health for a time, for the time at least, of some for whom we pray. Sometimes things happen to the best people in the world. And if they would put it this way, they would say, my ship's all broken. Someone else has said, I will not doubt, though all my ships at sea come drifting home with broken mast and sails. I shall believe the hand which never fails. From seeming evil worketh good for me. And though I weep because these sails are battered, still will I cry while my best hopes lie shattered. I trust in thee. And what a wonderful thing. No matter what comes, 
all to trust in God. It's the greatest thing that a Christian can ever do.